Hello everybody and welcome to week three or episode three of the series. Um, quick note before we start. I just showered so my hair's a mess. That's not important. Um, it's gonna get cut. So I'm excited for that. I really don't like having it all over my face. Okay. Um, so last week I couldn't have a video out. I'm trying to do these every week, one every week. But last week um, I had a I guess it's called a finger splint, which sounds goofy, but basically on my thumb in this hand, um, the bone from here to here just hurt tremendously, and um, I don't know exactly what I did to do that. I can already imagine the jokes in you guys' heads, but get your mind out of the gutter. Um, I don't know what I did to do that, but that hurt a lot, and I couldn't play guitar. It still hurts a lot. And it's still hard for me to play guitar, but we'll, we'll press on. I'm doing a lot better. I'm trying not to play so much so that I can help it recover quickly. And, um, yeah, basically, I couldn't have a video out. I'm sorry about that, but um, hopefully we'll be back on track today. Um, so, let's get to it. Last week we covered, um, last week we covered, uh, what did we cover last week? Let me check out my computer. Uh, picking, yeah, picking techniques and exercises, and we went all over that, and, um, yeah, and we ended with some basic, some, uh, so, some basic, uh, pattern to help us, um, you know, better our picking techniques, and this week, before we start with the new lesson, I want to show you guys a good, um, a good, uh, exercise you guys can do to help continue to build your picking, um, accuracy, and, uh, Sorry, my, my finger needed a crack. Sorry, I don't know if that grosses you out, but it does not me, so. Um, so yeah, so basically, I'll show you guys the, uh, the picking technique now, and then we'll start with the whole lesson right now. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Okay, okay, let me reposition my camera a little bit. Sorry if it makes a little bit of camera noise. I'm trying to cut, cut out the whole, um, you know, me uh, totally, like, trampling the camera with my fingers like ba -doom, doom, doom, doom. I actually had to restart this video because I was moving the camera and it fell and I was like oh my camera yeah anyway let's get to it so basically um, the idea of this picking exercise is you're gonna use your pick and you're gonna use um, some drumming knowledge so I don't know how many of you actually know anything about drumming but there's this thing called a paradiddle and what it basically is is where you start a pattern with one hand and then invert it to the other hand and uh, I'll try to demonstrate I'm not a drummer so drummers please feel free to correct me and make me look like a total nub that's fine so basically I'll do it on here let me turn off the volume so it doesn't um, get loud and crazy so basically I'll start a pattern with this hand and then I'll continue it with this hand so one two three four one two three four right one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right, hopefully you heard that or at least saw it. But basically what I was doing is starting the pattern with one hand and then moving on to the next hand. And we're gonna do that with picking and I'll show you how right now, look. We're gonna start down, up, down, up. And then we're gonna start up, down, up, down. So put it together, it's going to be down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. And let's try that on a string and see how it sounds. Let me actually bring the camera a tiny bit. <coughs> oh my goodness. Bless, bless me. Yay. Um, tiny bit closer so you guys can see. Let me actually try to bring it a tiny bit closer. So that you all may visually intake this information. Okay, sweet. So here's what we're gonna do. Doesn't matter what fret you're on. We're not focusing on the on the um, picking on the fingering hand today. We're uh, right now. We're just gonna focus on reviewing our picking technique. So I'm just gonna put my finger randomly here, whatever, just so I can mute it and hear the picking, not the note. And I'm gonna start down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. Try it again. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. And one more time. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. 
the main idea is to get it to sound smooth. So let me try it at, at a normal speed without stopping. Down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. Cool, cool, cool. So, yeah, just practice that. It's, um, it's a helpful little thing to help you guys, um, make sure that you're thinking about the way you're picking. Okay. And it may seem useless, but if you're doing anything on the guitar that involves jumping from string to string, and I'll show you, um, a little bit, and I'll try to use it. So let's say I wanted to do like a power chord, but actually pick it and um, pick the fifth every every once in a while. So I would probably do that pattern, and I was wouldn't even think about it. Let's show that after I rub my eye. Oh my God, I have something in my eye. So so down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, right? Down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down. Cool. So what I'm doing is I'm basically doing that paradiddle without realizing it. If you were to learn that part, you would be doing that. But forcing it on one string makes you think about your picking. And it's it's a really good exercise. And guys, um there is no secret to what I do. Let me let me just say that now. A lot of people have this idea like um, that I'm hiding some secret of of um, how do I practice or how I play. By the way, that's my Zelda poster right there. Yeah, right there. Oh. Let's see that. Oh yes, I am excited for Skyward Sword. That's gonna be a good game. Game Informer gave it a ten out of ten. I'm excited. Okay. Back to business. Where did that come from? Um, a lot of people. Um, recently have come up to me and said, hey, um, I think that, y you know, your secret is that you have time to practice, or you you're holding back some secrets, or whatever, and uh, honestly, no, I don't actually have that much time to practice. What it is, is I just find something to do related to the guitar. For example, when I'm driving, that's when I came up with this paradiddle exercise. I would drive, right, I would be driving my car with some steering wheel right here, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, and then, you know, this hand was out of commission that week, last week, so I didn't have anything to do. So while I was driving and sitting in traffic with this hand, I always kind of like bang the wheel, like do 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 do, and come up with like little riffs in my head. And instead of doing that, I just um, grab my pick, which I always have a pick in the car. And as I had the wheel in my hand, I started like with my pick, just down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, and practicing that on the wheel, on the steering wheel. And um, it just, you know, just having that motion, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down, is really helpful when you get back on the guitar, your hand is more used to it. And um, another thing that I do is, um, let's say I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm watching some, some video online or watching TV. Um, my right hand, which is my picking hand, for you it might be, if you're right-handed, I mean if you play right-handed guitar, it might be your left hand, your picking hand. I always have it doing patterns like one three five, one two three, one four three, you know, like just random patterns just to keep it agile. And I encourage that. It's it's not about you know I don't have all the time in the world to be in front of my instrument, but you know I want to learn, so I'll continue to learn even if I can't be in front of it 100% of the time all the time. Anyway, this week um, we are going to start now that we did that little review that I really wanted to show you guys. I thought that was pretty cool. So hopefully you guys thought so too. We're going to start with, um, actually wrote it down. Okay, so this week is stretching and fingering techniques. Sweet. So we reviewed the paradiddle. And um, now we're going to go on to basic patterns. So I'm going to show you guys a series of patterns that will help you guys um, recognize um, that you'll recognize them once you start doing scales and solos. You'll recognize these patterns show up a lot. So I thought I'd show them to you so you guys can start um, getting your hand used to making those basic shapes. So I'm going to do them all starting on the third fret, right? This is the third fret. That's that's the neck. One, two, three, right? That's the third dot. Third fret, E string. Cool. 
And um, I'll move the camera back so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys the first pattern. And that is going to be one, I mean uh, three, four, six. Three, four, six. Remember, always alternate pick. Don't don't get lazy on me and go. All right, alternate picking. Okay, three, four, six. That was the first pattern. The second pattern is going to be three, five, six. Three, five, six. By the way, if you want to do it up then down, for example, um, three five six five three, or three four six four three, that's fine. That's fine. This is I'm just showing you guys the patterns, and then we're gonna put it together in a little exercise. Um, once I'm done with all three of these basic patterns, so the third pattern is three five seven. This one's a little bit of a stretch as you can clearly see. Three, five, seven. And we can go backwards. So now we're going to put together the first pattern, three, four, six. The second pattern, three, five, six. And the third pattern, three, five, seven. Okay? So first pattern, second pattern, third pattern. First pattern, second pattern, third pattern, second pattern, first pattern. So let's try it together. I'm going to do first pattern, second pattern, third pattern, second pattern, first pattern. And that was just going up. do it where we scale up then scale back down and this isn't about going super fast this is just about learning these patterns I encourage you to challenge yourself and try these patterns over and over again at different speeds different areas of the neck and you might find it harder in the lower frets where it's wider apart and easier on the higher frets where it's very close together and just try these patterns right and maybe it's harder on the thinner strings for me it's a little bit tougher on the thinner strings So those are the basic patterns. Oh my god, someone is dropping something in the backyard. And a motorcycle race is happening. I don't know. I live in a ghetto area. Anyway, um, that was those were the three basic patterns that I want to show first. Um, and now we're going to go on to some stretching patterns. And um, once we're done with some stretches, then we're going to go on to some um, like delicate patterns. I call them like little um, cutesy patterns. And, uh, and then we'll go on from there. So let's do some stretching patterns. And um, we're going to start on the first fret. Okay? First fret on the E string. And we're going to stretch. We're going to go 1, 3, and then 1. Uh, I'm sorry, 1, 3. I am so sorry. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4. And I want you to do that fingering, one, two, with your index and middle, one, three, index and ring finger, and one, four, index and pinky, okay? Let's try it, one, two, one, three, one, four. Basic. 
that wasn't very much of a stretch. Now we're going to stretch it out a little bit more. And we're going to do the same idea, but we're going to scoot one finger over. So we're going to say one, two, one, three, one, five. Right? Before we had one, two, one, three, one, four. Now we're going to have one, two, one, three, one, five. The idea is to stretch the gap between the pinky and the index. Now we're going to move on and stretch the gap between the index and the middle. And this one's probably the toughest one to really stretch, but we'll do it. One, two, one, four, one, five. Okay? And um, guys, believe me, if you can't do this right away, if you, if you find it hard to stretch your fingers, don't worry. Don't worry, just go back to doing the regular one, two, one, three, one, four. One, two, one, three, one, four. And eventually you'll see how easy it is to just position your fingers that way. And you can start one, two, one, three, one, five. And start doing that one. And then move on to the more challenging ones. Okay, so we're going to do one, two, one, four, one, five. And notice how, how much my hand stretches. In order to stretch correctly without hurting yourself, you want your thumb to be on the neck, but your hand not to be resting on the neck. You definitely don't want this action where your hand is resting all over the neck. You want your hand off the neck and just your thumb pushing against it so that your hand can spring and stretch or go left and right. You want your thumb to be your pivot point. You don't want your hand to try to pivot while resting on the neck. You can't get very far, okay? Just some basic um, anatomy, human anatomy. We can't pivot if our hand is completely on the neck. We want the thumb on the neck. One, two, one, four, one, five. Okay? I can't stress that enough because I don't want you guys to get hurt and get discouraged. One, two, one, four, one, five. As I'm doing it, notice that I'm slowly pivoting my hand. And I'm going to turn the neck. This is going to be tough to do, but as I'm doing it, notice that my hand pivots as I'm doing it. Okay? I don't want you guys to be stiff and just push oh, as hard as I can, and then, ah, oh, I can't reach it. Pivot. Pivot, don't worry. That's how the best guitarists know when to pivot their hand and slide it. And they're very fluid with their movements on the neck. As my physics professor used to say, make love to it. Make love to it. He was a weird guy. Anyway, next position. We've already done one, two, one, three, one, four. And we've done one, two, one, three, one, five. And we've done one, two, one, four, one, five. So we've stretched out all four, then we stretch the gap between these two, and then we stretch the gap between these two. Now we're going to stretch the gap between these two, okay? So we're going to go one, three, one, four, one, five. And this one's going to be feel a lot easier than the other ones. One, three, one, four, one, five. And um, if you think, oh, mine sounds different than yours, because I'm also playing it backwards. So I'm going one, three, one, one, um, one, four, one, five, one, four, one, three. And you don't have to, I'm just doing it because I think it's a good exercise as well. One, three, one, four, one, five. And now we're gonna put it all together. Just like we did with the, with the basic um, patterns of uh, scaling patterns before, now we're doing it with this stretching pattern. So we're going to start off one, two, one, three, one, four. Then we're going to go on to one, two, one, three, one, five. And then one, two, one, four, one, five. Then one, three, one, four, one, five. So we're going to do the entire progression. Let me try that. One, two, one, three, one, four. One, two, one, three, one, five. One, two, one, four, one, five. 
One, three, one, four, one, five. Now I'll do it without talking. Yay, we did it. So those are basic stretches for getting the gaps between your fingers to extend a little bit. You, a good guitarist can stretch from the first fret to about the fifth fret. Great guitarist can stretch from the first fret to about the seventh fret. And um, crazy guitarists who have just gigantic hands can probably hit that eighth or ninth fret. Don't worry about it. I, I can barely hit the seventh fret. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the one and six. One and seven is a bit of a stretch for me. I have to really pivot a lot. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a... And I have big hands, so... Anyway. The next thing we're going to do in this series is... Um, we are going to go ahead and move on to... Doing... <laughs> repetition to build speed. This is something that I, I, I debated on making it its own video. But then I thought that I can put it in here because um, it's actually kind of goes along with what we're doing. So all these patterns and phrases that we've been learning, um, we can repeat them enough times and get so comfortable that they come easy. And then you think, wow, that guy, Joe Satriani, or whatever you know, favorite guitarist you have, he can play the same, I can play the same scale he plays, but he plays it so much faster than me. How does he do it? And the way he does it is by um, building his speed. So he takes those patterns that are on that scale, breaks them down into individual patterns, and works on his speed for that pattern. And we're going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to show you two techniques for doing it, actually. So I'm going to take the pattern. Um, on the D string, um, four, five, seven, five, four, four, five, seven, five, four. Basic pattern is part of a major scale. It can be part of a minor scale as well. In fact, I think that pattern fits into almost all the scales. So that's a pretty good pattern to start with. D string, four, five, seven, five, four. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you one technique for building speed, and then I'm going to show you another technique for building speed. Um, and I'll tell you which one I use. Um, we'll start with the one that I don't use a lot, which is to basically just take the pattern and repeat it over and over and over and over at the same speed, just constantly. Four, five, oops, sorry, four, five, seven, five, four. This is the, the basic pattern, this is the basic way to learn speed, is to repeat this pattern at a good tempo. So find a tempo that works well for you, um, that you could do it clearly, and just repeat it until it comes out perfect and identical every time. It's hard for me to do that while talking, but you guys get the idea. I think this pattern is boring way of learning it is boring so I'm going to show you guys now my technique so that technique was basically linear do the pattern at a, at a good tempo so don't pretend to sit here and be and be doing it don't do that don't just pick a tempo where it's, you can hear every note clearly but it's still fast enough to challenge you right so for some of you that might be slow for some of you that might be super fast okay don't worry about it just pick that tempo that feels right and just repeat it over and over again and eventually that'll become so comfortable that you'll be able to do it faster without realizing it I'm not really a fan of that style the way I do it is the way um, I learned to do it in a John Petrucci um, instructional DVD which was basically Yes, I am throwing my pickup. Um, and the way he said to do it was um, pick a tempo. Like, everyone has that speed that they just can't hit. Oh, that's just way too fast. But I'm almost there, you know, just, ah, oh, that little gap. So pick the tempo that is on the lower area of that gap. So not the fastest speed you've ever done, 
but really close to it and do it at that speed make it sound clean and then every once in a while just burst as fast as you can and then go back to that normal speed kind of like if you're running like a jogging a marathon and then you just sprint for like 10 feet and then you go back to jogging and then sprint for another 10 feet and then jog and slowly that'll build your your ability to build um, to run faster and that's the idea so I'm gonna pick a nice tempo this is a pretty nice tempo and then I'm gonna blast beat it for like a couple times couple times The idea is that I'm going at a pretty fast tempo and then I go a little bit faster a little bit and then I go back. And eventually, after doing that tons of times, you're able to take your, your, your regular tempo and bring it up a little bit. And then push yourself a little bit faster. And then up a little bit more and then a little bit faster. And then up a little bit more and then a little bit faster. And building speed is a slow process, but you can do it, and it is not hard. It is not a secret. It is not something magical. You can do it. So let's try it again. See, I went so fast that I, I lost my picking. Always keep your picking clear. Ah. Okay, so those are some basic ways to build some speed and with repetition. And you can do that with any of the patterns that we've covered throughout the entire video so far. Go back, look at any of those patterns, and try to do them fast and then a little bit faster. Some of them are hard, some of them are easy. Okay, go back, learn them do them easy peasy for breezy. Um, one of the last things we wanted to talk about in this video is multi-string patterns. And I'm going to show you guys just one multi-string pattern and then we're going to go on to the closer which will be putting all this stuff together. Um, so this multi-string pattern that I want to show you, we're going to do it up in the, in the high regions. Let me get my, my camera and bring it over here. Please don't fall down camera. Be a nice camera. Yay! Okay, where am I? Okay, this is not very high, but whatever. There we go. And there we are. All right. Um, and here's what we're going to do. This is going to be patterns of um, fingering patterns for your frets to get your fingers used to doing similar things slightly different, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start between the 9th fret and 12th fret, okay? 9th fret and 12th fret. And we're going to use four fingers, all four of them, okay? And we're going to start on the D string, 9th fret, G string, 10th fret, B string, 11th fret, and E string, 12th fret. Let me try moving this a little bit so you guys can see clearly. Clearly, that is a pretty good um, angle right there. Nice. So... D string 9, G string 10, B string 11, E string 12. Good. Good, good, good. Then, our next, um, our next phrase is going to be, keep your index and your pinky the same. Don't move them. You're going to lift off these two, and the, you're going to take um, your middle finger, and you're going to put it on B string 11th fret. And you're going to take your ring finger and put it on G string 11th fret. Sorry. The, so your pattern is going to be index finger 9 on the D string. Middle finger 10 on the B string. Um, ring finger 11 on the G string. And then your pinky 12 on the E string. So we did this, and then we moved those two. Basically switched, like mirrored the pattern. Okay? See that? See what I'm doing? It's going 10G to 10B, and then 11G, 11B 
to 11G. Okay? So that's your first phase, second phase, third phase, there's going to be four total, is going to be you take, leave these two middle fingers alone and we're just going to work with the outside fingers, okay? And the index finger is going to come down from the D string and jump to the ninth fret all the way in the E string. And then your pinky finger is going to come from the 12th fret E string to the 12th fret D string. See that? Okay, I'm not moving the middle, the middle two fingers, just the outsides. So that's your third, right? That's your third phase. So we have first phase, second phase, third phase. And now the fourth phase is you take your middle two fingers and put them back to their original positions. Your middle finger is going to go to the 10th fret G string. And your in, uh, ring finger is going to go to the 11th fret B string. Okay? Okay? So we're going to do first phase, second phase, third phase, fourth phase. And you're going to repeat it. Cool. Now let's try it with picking. If you guys are confused as to what I'm doing, go back and rewind the video a bit and learn the, the fingering again. If you have any questions, please tell me and then I can send you the tabs. It's no big deal. Okay, so let's start with the first phase. And it doesn't matter how you pick them. I want you to focus on this hand, not this hand. So I'm going to pretty much just one, 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 all the way down. And they sound gross. Don't worry about it. Next one. Next phase. Next phase. Next phase. Back to the original. Now I'm going to strum them and do them a little bit faster. The idea behind this is you want it to get it to sound as clean as possible and you can do them on any on any four strings so I did them on the lowest on the highest four strings you can do them in the middle strings on the A D G and B or on the E A D G right So you can jump from string set to string set. Okay? So that's your basic, not basic, but more advanced fingering. And it's really complicated because your fingers have to become independent. This one, this one, this one, and this one are all going to be doing different things. And you have to learn to control them. I have a hard time lifting them without hitting the string as I lift. So I need to work on that. See, everyone works on stuff, so it's no big deal. And um, this video is running a little bit long. That's kind of scary. I don't know what my YouTube limit is, but hopefully I'll be okay. So let's go ahead and do the last bit. And um, yes. So this last bit is going to be a G scale. And um, pretty much anybody can do a G scale. And if you can't, I'm going to go over it step by step, so don't even worry. This is the third fret. This is G, right? And I'm going to do it in three positions. And then um, independently. And I'm going to teach them to you independently. Then I'll show you how to put them together into one big scale. So, um, and that will lead us into next week's exercises. And next week's um, lesson plan. And yeah, that should be fun. Um, so, we're going to start on the third fret. And it's going to be 3, 5 on the E string, A string, 2, 3, 5, 
D string, 2, 4, 5, G string, 2, 4, 5, B string, 3, 5, E string, 2, 3. Okay, that's the first method of doing the G scale. And I'll, tr I'll try it now. Let me, uh, come on camera, stop being out of position. Uh. So. I did it forwards and backwards. The second way of doing it, I'm going to move my camera again a million billion times. It's going to be, this is the second method of G scale. 3, 5, 7, E string, A string, 3, 5, 7, D string, 4, 5, 7, G string, 4, 5, 7, B string, 5, 7, 8 and E string 578 again. So let me perform the second method of G scale. So the first method covers I think two entire G scales, two octaves. This one covers two and a half octaves and the next one covers three octaves. So this is the third method of doing the G scale, okay? And the beginning is going to be similar, but it's going to get different at the end. So, let me see if we can do this. We can do it. We can do it. 3, 5, 7 on the E string. 3, 5, 7 on the A string. Then we're going to jump up to 9, 10, 12 on the A string. 9, 10, 12 D string. 9, 11, 12, 14, G string. Then B string is going to be 12, 13, 15. And then the E string is going to be 12, 14, 15. Okay? And if you didn't catch all of that, just rewind the video um, and listen to it again. So I'll, I'll perform it now. of doing the G scale. And remember that the 15th fret is the same as the 3rd fret, just an octave higher. So if you do the first method and you copy that and do it on the starting on the 15th fret, it'll be the exact same scale. So I'll do it on the 3rd fret first. Likewise, we can also do the second method, starting on the 15th fret. So, down on the 3rd fret it was... And now on the 15th fret... Same thing. So, now we're going to put it all together. And we are going to do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna entitle them as the first method. Up, and then come down, on the second method. Then from the second method, you come up to the third method. All the way up to the top, and then come back down first method, but on the octave, so up here on the top. Then you're going to come back up to the second method up here. And then you're going to come back down using the third method all the way back down. So I'll try to do that. So first method up. And then second method. up, 
Then first method on the octave. Then second method up. Then third method back down. Now let me do it without being interrupted and we'll see how it sounds. It seems like a lot, don't worry. You don't have to actually do that this week. So, the idea behind this week was to just get you guys familiar with octaves, get you guys familiar with stretching and patterns and all that jazz. And um, yeah, so I'll explain that scale a little bit more next week. But if you wanna go back and challenge yourself and say, first learn all the patterns, learn um, you know those, those finger positioning patterns, um, stretch your fingers out, and then at the end, if you really want to try it, go back, listen to that scale, listen to how I explained it, listen to all the ways I did it, then try doing it bit by bit, pause the video, do the first part, do the second part, do it all, and then come back and finish it all up, pause the video again, try it yourself, and you'll be able to do it, trust me. And um, the next video is going to be hopefully out next week, probably next Tuesday before Thanksgiving. I will try to have that out before Thanksgiving. Um, I might be busy because, again, Skyward Sword. Where's my poster? You can't see it. Skyward Sword comes out on, 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 on Sunday, so I might be busy. But I will make time for that video. And the uh, topic of that video is going to be getting to know the neck. And that last part, all those scales up and down everywhere, that was kind of a prelude to what we're going to be doing next week. So it's going to be kind of fun. I can't wait for that. That's going to be a good a good set of video, a, a good video. And after that, let me see what other lessons I have left. I have um, expressions and timings, which is a little more advanced than what we're doing now, and rhythmic soloing, which um, I might push those back and uh, go back and do some more basic videos. So um, like learning chords, learning scales, learning where to put your fingers, like, because I have a lot of people who really want to learn that, and um, I don't want to charge them. So I'd rather do it on YouTube and, uh, you know, just do it for free, do it for everybody so everybody can enjoy it. Okay, guys, so hopefully you like the video. Um, let me know if you need tabs. I can get those to you. No big deal. Um, I have them written out, so I just scan them, send it to your email or whatever, or post them somewhere. I don't know. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Sorry about the delay. Again, my thumb. And uh, keep you at it, guys. You're doing good. Let me know. Give me some feedback. Thanks, guys.